India just did something the rest of the auto industry swore was impossible. They launched a real electric car, not a golf cart, not a toy, for the price of an iPhone. $2,000, that's it. And you won't believe it, but this thing actually works. It has doors, windows, headlights, even a backup camera, all for less than what most people spend on a new laptop. Now you're probably thinking, okay, what's the catch? This $2,000 EV isn't just a funny headline, it's a direct punch in the face to Tesla, BYD, and Volkswagen. And by the end of this video, you're going to see exactly why a tiny workshop in India might have just flipped the entire EV market upside down. So buckle up, or in this case, click the lap belt, because you're about to find out how the world's cheapest electric car could end up changing everything. So why should you even care about a $2,000 electric car from India? Here's the reality. The EV boom isn't happening in California or Germany anymore. It's happening in India. In 2024 alone, over 2 million EVs hit Indian roads. That's scooters, tuk-tuks, cars, everything. And the total registered EVs are now above 56 lakh. That's nearly 6 million. Every major city is drowning in subsidies, tax breaks, and toll waivers just to get people into electric. But here's the problem. Almost all of those cars are still expensive. Even India's so-called cheap EVs like the MG Comet or Tata Tiago Ev cost four to six times more than this. That means most families are still priced out and the big automakers are fine with that. They've convinced you that electric has to mean luxury, that you need giant touchscreens, autopilot wannabes, and a price tag that makes your wallet cry. That's the villain in this story, a broken idea that EVs are only for the wealthy. And now comes the hero, the Yakuza Karishma, a scrappy three-seat lap-belted underdog that laughs at Tesla's $25,000 promises and says, nah, we'll do it for $2,000 today. But is it just a gimmick? Or is it proof that the entire auto industry has been overcharging you this whole time? Here's how we'll break it down. I'm going to give you 10 reasons why this tiny EV matters more than anyone wants to admit. Some of them will make you laugh. Some of them will make you angry. But number nine might just make you move to India. And trust me, you're going to want to see number two because it's the part that will keep CEOs up at night. Number one, the price tag. The Yakuza Karishma rolls off the lot for about 1.7 lakh rupees. That's roughly $2,000. Let's pause on that. Two grand. Less than a new iPhone 15 Pro. Less than what most people drop on rent in a single month. Now, why does this matter? Because in the EV world, the so-called cheap cars aren't cheap at all. The MG Comet? Around $9,000. The Tata Tiago? Close to $10,000. Europe's little Citroen Ami? That one will set you back nearly $8,000. Even China's famous Wuling Mini EV, a bare-bones city pod, starts around $4,900. So when the Karishma shows up at literally half that price, or less, it doesn't just undercut the market, it blows a crater in it. Most people are going to hate me for saying this, but if India can sell a working EV for $2,000, then every company charging you $20,000, $30,000, or even $40,000 for an electric car has a whole lot of explaining to do. And this is where the panic starts, because price isn't just a number, it's a weapon. And right now, the Karishma is using it like a bazooka, aimed directly at the profit margins of Tesla, BYD, and Volkswagen. But wait, it gets crazier, because even at this rock-bottom cost, the Karishma still packs a working battery and usable range. Which leads us to reason number two, and this one is where CEOs really start sweating. Number two, the battery and range. This is where things get weird. Under the seat, the Karishma hides a 60 volt, 45 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. That's about 2.7 kilowatt hours. Tiny compared to the 19 kilowatt hour pack in a Tata Tiago dot Eve or the 17 kilowatt hour pack in an MG Comet. But here's the kicker. Yakuza claims it can still deliver 50 to 60 kilometers of range on a full charge. That's roughly 31 to 37 miles. And then, in classic budget car chaos, their own FAQ page casually says it can go 150 kilometers per charge. Which is it? 50 or 150? Honestly, even owners aren't sure. It's like a fast food menu where the burger in the photo never looks like the one in the bag. But here's what we do know. Even with the smaller number, the math destroys petrol cars. Charging the Karishma costs about 30 pays per kilometer. That's less than half a US cent. Feeding a small gas hatchback? About 15 times more expensive. In other words, every time you drive this thing, your wallet throws a little party. And safety-wise, the pack isn't a flamethrower. It uses the same chemistry Tesla relies on for its base Model 3 in China. E-cells that are stable and affordable. Plus, there's a giant red cutoff switch on the dash. Think of it as an eject button for your battery if things get spicy. Now, range alone doesn't make a car this cheap possible. The real magic trick is how they slashed costs everywhere else. And that's where reason number three flips the script. 
because this company turned penny pinching into an Olympic sport. Number three, cost cutting magic. So how do you actually build a working car for the price of a decent gaming PC? You cut costs in ways the big automakers wouldn't dare touch. Yakuza pulled off what I call the five hacks of frugality. Hack one, local parts only. Every big component, battery, motor, metal, comes from within a 400 kilometer radius. No imports, no tariffs, no container ships charging world tour fees. Hack two, raid the tuk-tuk parts bin. The Karishma borrows scooter speedometers, rickshaw grade motors, and even a home charger that costs less than a Starbucks latte. It's Frankenstein engineering, and it works. Hack three, the five screw rule. Instead of 25 fasteners holding a taillight, they redesigned it to use five identical screws tightened with one cordless gun. Faster assembly, lower costs, fewer headaches. Hack four, people, not robots. Forget million dollar robotic arms. This car is built on waist high benches by workers who actually know which end of the wrench to hold. Human powered assembly keeps the price low. Hack five, delete the fluff. No 15 inch touchscreen, no autopilot wannabe, not even power windows in the base trim. What you do get is a palm-sized LCD with speed, battery, and whether your lights are on. That's it. Most people are going to hate me for saying this, but it turns out deleting features doesn't just save money, it saves sanity. Because every part you remove is one less thing to break. This is IKEA-level design thinking applied to cars. Simple, efficient, and ruthlessly cheap. And yet somehow it still feels like a real car. But what does this stripped-down machine actually look and feel like inside? That's where reason number four comes in. And trust me, it's both hilarious and surprising. Number four, design and cabin quirks. Step inside the Karishma and you realize something shocking. It's not a toy. It seats three people, two adults and one stowaway-sized kid in the back. The steering wheel looks like it was stolen from a scooter. The quarter windows don't roll down. They pivot open like your aunt's kitchen vent. The seats, pure budget airline economy. Firm, simple, and just good enough to get you there. And yet, somehow it feels like a car. There are real doors, real glass windows, real LED headlights. You even get a reverse camera with guidelines, USB and Bluetooth so you can blast Bollywood hits at red lights, all in a car that costs less than a set of Apple AirPods Max. If you spring for the luxury trim, you get power windows and a brave little air blower. Not AC, just a blower. Basically the car equivalent of someone fanning you with a magazine. And the outside? Imagine a cartoon Fiat 500 crossed with a toy car. It's shorter than a Mini, lighter than some Harley Davidsons, and rides on bicycle-thin 13-inch wheels that scream, skip leg day. Paint options, white, red, or silver. That's it, the Pokemon starter pack of car colors. Here's the part nobody's talking about. For two grand, you're getting features that even $30,000 SUVs sometimes forget. Backup camera, check. Bluetooth, check. Quirky design that gets people pointing on the street, double check. But all those quirks hide a huge elephant in the room, safety. And when we talk safety, the story takes a sharp turn because this is where India's regulations and Yakuza's gamble clash head on. Number five, safety and regulations. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the back seat safety. Because here's the uncomfortable truth. The Yakuza Karishma isn't technically a car, it's a quadricycle. That puts it in a special legal class in India called L7, which has lighter rules than normal passenger cars. Translation? No airbags required. No ABS required. None of the crash test star ratings you're used to seeing on real cars. Instead, you get the basics. Lap belts instead of full seat belts, a simple two-channel battery management system, and one very dramatic feature a giant red kill switch on the dash. Think of it as the nope button. If anything feels sketchy, you flip the switch and the whole car goes dark. Now, on one hand, this makes sense. The Karishma tops out around 25 to 30 kilometers per hour. That's about 15 to 18 miles per hour. In Mumbai rush hour traffic, where the average speed is 11 kilometers per hour, you're basically Lightning McQueen. At those speeds, you're more likely to get a bruise than a broken bone. But here's the scary part. If regulators tighten the rules, Say tomorrow, they decide every four-wheeler needs airbags, the Karishma could be banned overnight. That's the villain in this chapter. Regulation uncertainty. One new rule and the entire low-cost EV class gets nuked. And that raises the question, why would anyone buy a car this bare-bones if the rules could wipe it out? The answer is in the running costs. Because once you see how cheap this thing is to charge and drive, you realize safety is only half the story. Number six, charging and energy math. 
Now let's talk about the part that makes petrol cars cry, charging. The Karishma's little 2.7 kilowatt hour battery may sound laughable compared to Tesla's 60 plus kilowatt hour monsters, but here's what it means for your wallet. A full charge from a wall socket costs about 14 to 18 rupees. That's the price of a street chai and a samosa. And that full charge gets you 50 to 60 kilometers of driving. Do the math. That's about 30 pace per kilometer, less than half a US cent. To put that in perspective, a small petrol hatchback gulps down about four to five rupees per kilometer. Over 50,000 kilometers of city driving, the Karishma drinks 21,500 rupees in electricity, while the petrol car burns through 277,000 rupees in fuel. That's a savings big enough to rebuy the Karishma and still take a beach vacation. And if waiting six to seven hours overnight feels too long, Yakuza offers quick charging, 80% in about three hours. But here's the genius twist, battery swapping. Instead of charging, you roll into a swap shed, pop out your empty pack, and slide in a fresh one in under three minutes. Think of vending machine, but instead of Coke bottles, it spits out batteries. Even mom and pop grocery stores are adding these bays next to their Pepsi fridges. Most people are going to hate me for saying this, but this swap model could make petrol stations feel like payphones. Outdated, expensive, and only useful for people who haven't caught up yet. But hold on. It's not just charging that makes the Karishma unstoppable. There's a bigger force fueling this EV's rise. And it's not the motor, not the battery, it's the government. Number seven, government juice. Here's the truth. The Karishma wouldn't even exist without a secret weapon, government subsidies. India has been throwing money at EV adoption like it's a national sport. First came fame too, which chopped thousands off battery costs. Then EMPS 2024 stepped in, covering electric two-wheelers and three-wheelers. And now the big play is PME Drive running until 2028, designed to supercharge affordable electrification. What does that mean for cars like the Karishma? It's simple, every kilowatt hour of battery gets a discount. Every road tax and registration fee gets waived in EV-friendly states. And in some cities like Delhi, you even get free parking and toll exemptions. Now, here's the villain in the story. Foreign car makers don't get the same love. Tesla, BYD, and Volkswagen are forced to either pay heavy import duties or build factories in India with strict local sourcing rules. Yakuza, they're already local. Their parts come from within 400 kilometers, which means they pocket every benefit the system offers. So while global giants drown in paperwork and tariffs, this tiny Indian startup is surfing a government-made wave straight into the market. But wait, it gets crazier because subsidies alone don't explain why demand is exploding. The bigger picture is India's entire EV boom, and it's turning into something no automaker can afford to ignore. Number eight, India's EV boom. If you think this $2,000 EV is just a local gimmick, think again. The backdrop here is India's massive EV surge. In 2024 alone, over 2 million EVs were sold in India. That's scooters, tuk-tuks, buses, and cars combined. And as of early 2025, the total number of registered EVs is already over 5.6 million. Let that sink in. Millions of vehicles silently rolling through traffic that used to be choked with petrol fumes. Where's the growth coming from? Not Teslas, not premium sedans. The heroes are e-scooters and e-rickshaws, the lifeblood of India's cities. They're cheap, practical, and perfect for short hops through gridlock. The Karishma is piggybacking on that same trend, except instead of two or three wheels, it adds a roof, doors, and just enough comfort to make you feel like you're in a real car. But here's the wild part. India's cities practically reward you for going electric. In Delhi, EVs dodge road taxes and registration fees. In Maharashtra, EVs cruise toll roads for free while petrol cars get stuck paying. And across the country, subsidies chop costs down even further. So when you mix exploding demand, government freebies, and a population of 1.4 billion people craving cheap mobility, you get the perfect storm. And the Karishma isn't just riding the storm, it's steering it. But what happens when you compare India's $2,000 EV with the cheap EVs other countries brag about? That's where reason number nine really stings. For Europe, for China, and for anyone who thought they'd cornered the budget EV market. Number nine, global comparisons. Let's stack the Karishma against the rest of the world's so-called budget EVs. Spoiler, it's not even close. Take China's superstar, the Wuling Hongguang Mini EV. It's sold millions, packs a 9.3 to 13.9 kilowatt hour battery, and offers 120 to 170 kilometers of range. Price, around $4,900 at launch. That's already more than double the Karishma. Now jump to Europe. The Citroen Ami is basically a rolling phone booth with a steering wheel. It's got a 5.5 kilowatt hour pack, 
about 70 kilometers of range, and tops out at 45 kilometers per hour. Price tag? Between 7,000 and 9,000 euros. That's eight to $10,000 for something that looks like it was designed in Minecraft. And India's own cheap options? The MG Comet runs 17 kilowatt hours with approximately 230 kilometers range, but it costs around seven to nine lakh rupees. That's $8,500 plus. The Tata Tiago EV stretches up to 24 kilowatt hours and 315 kilometers claimed range, but you're paying eight to 10 lakh rupees minimum. Now here's the punchline. The Karishma is literally a fraction of those prices. At $2,000, it undercuts the cheapest EV in China, humiliates Europe's city pods, and makes India's homegrown rivals look overpriced. Most people are going to hate me for saying this, but the Karishma is proof that EVs don't have to cost five figures. They only do because automakers want them to. And that's why foreign execs are sweating. Because once buyers see a drivable EV priced like a smartphone, suddenly every other sticker price looks like a scam. But before you get too excited, there's a big catch. For all its charm, the Karishma isn't bulletproof. In fact, there are risks that could kill this entire experiment overnight. And that's where reason number 10 comes in. Number 10, the bad and the ugly. All right, time for some honesty. As disruptive as the Karishma looks on paper, this story isn't bulletproof. In fact, there are potholes big enough to swallow this tiny EV hole. First, regulations. Right now, the Karishma slides by as a quadricycle. No airbags, no ABS, no crash tests. But if India tightens the rules, say tomorrow they demand airbags in every four-wheeler, the Karishma could vanish overnight. Second, battery fires. Even though it uses safe e chemistry, it only takes one viral video of a Karishma going up in smoke, maybe because someone drilled into the pack or charged it wrong, to nuke public trust. Remember the Samsung Galaxy Note 7? Yeah, that kind of PR disaster could happen here. Third, rising raw material costs. Copper, lithium, even basic sheet metal. If those prices spike, a $2,000 sticker becomes impossible. Margins on a car this cheap are razor thin. One supply chain hiccup and the whole model collapses. And fourth, public perception. Let's be real. Some people will never take a $2,000 EV seriously. They'll laugh, call it a toy, or meme it to death on Reddit. Internet ridicule can kill momentum just as fast as bad engineering. Most people are going to disagree with me here, but disruption always looks like a joke before it becomes reality. Remember how people mocked the Prius? Six million sales later, nobody was laughing. So yes, the Karishma has weak links, but that doesn't mean it's doomed. Because while critics focus on what could go wrong, Yakuza is already looking outward. They're not just building for India, they're planning to ship these things overseas. And that's where reason number 11 blows the door wide open. So what's the bottom line? The Yakuza Karishma isn't fast, it isn't flashy, it won't set a Nürburgring lap record or win a beauty contest, but it just proved something the entire industry has been hiding from you. Electric cars don't need to be expensive. If India can put a working EV on the road for $2,000, with real doors, real windows, a battery that charges overnight and costs pennies to run, then every car maker charging $20,000, $30,000, or $40,000 suddenly has a problem. Because the Karishma isn't just a quirky city car, it's a challenge, a dare, a giant neon sign screaming at Tesla, BYD, Volkswagen, and everyone else. If we can do it, why can't you? Sure, it's not perfect. Safety rules could change. Materials could get more expensive. One bad fire could ruin the brand. But here's the bigger truth. Disruption always starts small. People laughed at the Prius. They mocked the Wooling Mini EV. And now, millions sold. The Karishma might not be the final form of cheap EVs, but it's the spark that shows the world what's possible. And once that idea is out, there's no putting it back in the box. If a smartphone-priced EV can work in India, what's stopping the rest of the world? If you made it this far, you're officially my favorite viewer. Smash that like button, drop your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe because the future of cars is getting cheaper, smaller, and a whole lot more interesting.